Hello viewers, uh, in this session uh, we will see uh, the Cauchy's residue theorem and uh, applications of Cauchy's uh, residue theorem. Uh, so, we will conclude uh, this course uh, with the applications of Cauchy's residue theorem. So, we have seen that uh, the coefficients in the Lorentz series expansion are uh, unique okay? and then uh, we have the following corollary to uh, Lorentz theorem. Okay? So, um, let f be analytic in B prime A r okay? and so it will have a uh, Laurent series expansion in uh, B prime A r. Okay? Uh, so, uh, the behavior of f can be predicted around A, uh, f has uh, 1, f has uh, removable singularity, excuse me, singularity uh, at A. If, um, in the Laurent series expansion of uh, f around a, okay, um, Cn is equal to zero for all n less than zero. Okay, so I'm assuming the Laurent series expansion has the form sigma Cn uh, z minus a power n n from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so, if the coefficients uh, with n negative are all 0, okay, then the nature of singularity at A uh, is uh, removable, which means f can be made to be an analytic function in all of B A R. Okay. So, uh, f has likewise f has a pole of order m m greater than or equal to 1 okay, uh, at A, if uh, in the L s expansion, I okay, will just say L s C for Laurent series expansion of f around A, uh, C minus m is non-zero, okay, this particular m, C minus m is non-zero and C n is 0 for all uh, n less than or equal to or sorry sorry le, n strictly less than minus m okay so we have seen uh, such a form earlier okay so uh, uh, i'll go back to uh, the following that we have proved a uh, few uh, or couple of sessions ago okay so if um, f had a pole of order m we showed that f of z has this form okay okay and we call this part a uh, singular part okay so you see that this c naught is the uh, c minus m under discussion currently okay and then um, and then uh, everything uh, i mean the coefficients of z minus a power uh, minus m minus 1 onwards on the negative side are all 0. Okay. So, this is exactly what uh, we are stating now. We are saying that if f has a I mean f has a pole of order m at a if in the Laurent series expansion c minus uh, minus n is 0 for all uh, minus n less than minus m. Okay. So, that is 2 okay. and then uh, 3 it has an isolated. Okay. So, f has an isolated essential singularity at A. Okay. If in the L s e of f around A, okay, uh, there is no m such that such that uh, C n is equal to 0 for all n less than minus m. Okay? So, or in short uh, 
uh, it is the opposite of 2. Okay. So, um, it is the opposite in the sense that uh, you have infinitely many uh, non zero C n s occurring uh, on the negative side uh, or in the negative integers uh, n. Okay. So, uh, so that is uh, an isolated essential singularity. Okay. So, uh, that is just a, a restatement okay, and it follows from uh, the restatement of what we have already seen and it follows from Lorentz series uh, or Lorentz theorem. Okay. So, it is a corollary and uh, we will make a definition uh, as follows. Okay. So, suppose that f is analytic in B prime A r in the deleted neighborhood of uh, A okay, and uh, that f has a pole at A. Okay. Then uh, the residue of f at A is the unique coefficient c minus 1 of z minus a power minus 1 in the Laurent series expansion of f about a okay, and is denoted by r e s residue of f at a. Okay. So, uh, we can actually make this definition even for an essential singularity, okay, but we will confine ourselves uh, to uh, poles of f at a that is the residue of f uh, at a. Okay. So, going back to um, this form once again the c m minus 1 okay, uh, will be called uh, the residue of f at a. Okay. So, look at this form uh, of f and then uh, that is the residue. Okay. So, we proved I mean uh, using the Lorentz theorem we proved that such a C m minus 1 has a definite form okay, and we showed that uh, that is unique. Okay. So, uh, we will call that the residue of f at a. Okay. What is the use of that residue once again I will go back to that uh, session uh, where we uh, saw the following lemma. Okay. We said that uh, that C m minus 1 becomes important uh, uh, when we try to integrate f around gamma a simple closed curve gamma. Okay. Uh, so, uh, where this uh, singularity a lies inside of that gamma. Okay. So, then the coefficient of 1 by z minus a uh, is the only term that survives when you integrate f uh, over gamma. Okay. So, uh, so that is Okay, that is the content of the following theorem in this restricted sense. Okay. So, we call this theorem the Cauchy's residue theorem or a version of it really okay, confined only to poles of uh, f. Okay. So, let f be analytic uh, inside and on a positively oriented uh, contour gamma okay, except possibly okay, uh, for a finite number of poles a 1 through a n inside gamma. So, they will not allow the poles to lie on gamma inside gamma. Okay. So, then the integration over gamma of f of z d z is going to give you 2 pi i times the sum of residues k equals 1 through n of the residues of f at the points a k and the singularity is a k okay, or in this case poles. Okay. 
So, uh, I will pause here to mention that uh, the Cauchy's residue theorem holds in general even if th these singularities are, uh, are essential, okay. but uh, I have stated here uh, the Cauchy's residue theorem only for uh, poles okay, and we will uh, prove uh, Cauchy's residue theorem in this uh, restricted uh, sense and see uh, its applications. Okay. So, uh, here is a proof of the Cauchy's residue theorem. Okay. So, uh, the proof involves uh, the technique we have used to prove this lemma. Uh, let me go back to the previous session once again. Uh, so, it essentially involves this technique of expressing f uh, in this manner. Okay. So, this is the Laurent series expansion of f uh, in the neighborhood of A okay. and what was important was that this f 1 of z uh, was uh, uh, or, or has a removable singularity at A at most a removable singularity at A and it can be uh, removed. Okay, so, that is the idea. Okay. So, what we will do is uh, we will use the Laurent series expansion of f uh, around each of the singularity okay, and then uh, try to come up with uh, an analytic function on all of this uh, uh, inside of gamma. Okay. So, here is the uh, technique let um, f k of z okay, be the singular part. of the Laurent series expansion of, uh, okay, of f about uh, a k. Okay. So, um, recall the singular part is of the form 1 by or sorry uh, c minus k by z minus I apologize I should not take k. Okay. So, uh, it depends on the order of uh, pole at um, at the point a k. Okay, so let's let's for the time being assume it's uh, some m. Okay, so then it looks like c minus m z minus a k power m uh, etc. Plus c minus m minus one uh, minus m plus one rather uh, z minus a k power m m minus one etc. Okay, plus a c uh, minus one by z minus a plus uh, etcetera. Okay, plus c naught plus etcetera. Okay, so this is the Laurent series expansion about a k. We are assuming. Uh, uh, I mean, if a k has a, uh, I mean, a k is a pole of f uh, of order uh, m at a k. Okay, so this is the singular part, and this we are calling as f k of z for each a k we will do this. Okay. So, um, so, in a neighborhood of a k this expansion is valid and we will take this singular part f k of z. Okay. And then uh, now notice that f k of z is a function uh, which has a singularity at a k which has a, 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 a pole at a k. Okay. Uh, it is a function in its own right which is a which is a pole at a k of order m and it has no other singularity in the whole of the complex plane. Okay. So, it is defined well defined on all of the complex plane. In particular uh, f k is a function which is defined uh, on and inside gamma okay, and uh, except for the singularity at the point a k. Okay. So, let f k be the singular part of the Laurent series expansion of f about a k. So, what we can do is uh, for, so this is for k equals 1, 2, so on until n. So, then what we can do is we will construct a new function g equals uh, f of z. Okay. So, g equals f minus sigma k equals 1 through n of f k of well f k. Okay. So, like I mentioned each of these has singularities at respective a k s and they are uh, and they are uh, analytic otherwise. Okay. So, on all of the complex plane except the point a k these all these functions uh, are uh, analytic. Okay. So, f minus this singular part okay, uh, in a neighborhood of a k will look like that. 
okay. and then uh, and so uh, this has uh, a removable singularity okay. has removable singularities. at uh, a k okay at each of the a k k equals 1 through n okay so you can remove them we know how to redefine g okay so remove them okay we'll uh, we know how to remove uh, removable singularities we will redefine g uh, of a k for example, to be the limit as z goes to a k of g of a k of g uh, of z. Okay. So, we will remove them and redefine g okay, and redefine g. So, we will exchange g with uh, that new g the redefinition of g okay. and then so uh, now g is analytic after, after this redef redefinition analytic on and inside. Uh, gamma. Okay, so uh, which means it's it's uh, analytic on an open set uh, on and inside containing uh, gamma and the inside of gamma. Okay, so uh, by Cauchy's theorem, we know that by Cauchy's theorem. Now we know that uh, the integration uh, over gamma of g of z dz is zero. Okay. What that implies is that uh, the integration over gamma of well g is f minus sigma f k. Okay. So, uh, integration over gamma of f d z okay, uh, minus um, sigma k equals 1 through n. So, I am actually exchanging the integration and the summation because this is a finite sum we can definitely exchange the um, integration and the summation here integration over gamma of f k of z dz that is equal to 0 this is basically your g. Okay. And then uh, so this implies that um, uh, the integration over gamma of f of z dz is equal to uh, sigma k equals 1 through n of integration over gamma f k of z uh, dz. Okay, but we know something about this integration. We have already shown earlier uh, this lemma. Okay, so this lemma we have proved that uh, this is nothing but two pi i times uh, that coefficient of z minus a uh, power minus one, which is c minus one in the current context. Okay, so uh, this is equal to sigma k equals one through n. Uh, we define c minus one to be the residue of f at a k. Okay, so, the integration over gamma of f of z dz is hence equal to uh, the sum of the residues of f uh, at a k. I apologize, I need a 2 pi i. It is 2 pi i times the residue of f at a k. Okay, so, uh, it is 2 pi i times the coefficient of z minus a power minus 1. So, I have 2 pi i times. Okay. So, that is the proof of uh, this restricted version of uh, Cauchy's theorem, uh, Cauchy's residue theorem. Okay. And uh, we will uh, today see uh, some applications of Cauchy's residue theorem. The first application uh, to Cauchy's residue theorem uh, is the argument principle. Okay. So, the argument principle. So, we have already seen uh, the counting zeros theorem okay, and this argument principle is a, a version of it is a modified version of it. Uh, okay. So, here is the statement. Uh, so, suppose f is uh, meromorphic uh, on and inside. simple closed uh, curve gamma with zeros um, a j 
okay and uh, poles uh, bk okay where j runs over some index and k runs over some finite index okay so let's say uh, 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to uh, l1 and 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to l2 the l1 and l2 are unimportant except that there are finite number of poles and zeros uh, inside of gamma uh, suppose uh, none of aj or bk lie on gamma okay so with this assumption uh, then the integration 1 by 2 pi i times the integration over gamma of f prime of z by f of z d z is going to give you capital M minus capital N, where capital M is uh, the sum of orders of zeros at uh, a k okay, at a j. Okay, j from 1 through L 1 okay, and n is the sum of orders of poles at uh, b k, k runs from 1 through L 2. Okay, so, you add up all the uh, orders uh, at each of the pole b k okay, that is capital N and add the sum uh, add the orders of zeros at each of the a j and that will be your capital M. Okay. So, we have already seen the counting zeros theorem, we have encountered this integral and there we showed that 1 by 2 pi i times integration over gamma of f prime by f d z is equal to capital M if f is analytic on and inside gamma. Okay. So, here uh, it is a modified version if we have poles in addition to zeros. Okay. So, we are going to show that uh, this integral will give us m minus n. Uh, so, proof it is given that f of z has a 0 at a j. Okay. So, f of z let us suppose is equal to z minus a power h or let me call it a 1 power h or a k power h in general. Okay. So, f of z is equal to let f of z equal z minus a k power h k times some f 1 of z. Okay. So, in a neighborhood of uh, a k, uh, we can definitely write f of z in the following fashion. Okay. Then, um, then we know that f prime over f, we did this calculation earlier. Okay. So, this gives us um, h k by z minus a k plus uh, f 1 prime of z divided by f 1 uh, of z. Okay. So, we are here we are assuming that 0 at a k has order h k. So, what that means is f 1 of a k is not, not 0. Okay. So, f prime by f has a simple pole okay, uh, at a k okay, uh, and uh, the residue of f prime by f okay, uh, at a k is going to be um, h k. Okay. That is the residue. Okay. So, I mean this is uh, this function is going to be uh, analytic. Okay. So, this is this has its own uh, Taylor series expansion in the neighborhood of a k. So, uh, this is the only singular part. So, that gives us uh, h k. Okay. That gives us that the residue is h k. Okay. Likewise, uh, if that works for any k uh, 1 through l 1 okay. and then let f of z in the neighborhood of pole we will do the following. Let f of z equal z minus b j power minus m j times f 2 of z okay, where f has a pole okay, of order m j at b j. Okay. I should have used b k's and a j's does not matter. Okay. So, it is 
one and the same. Okay. So, uh, here we will let k run through 1 from 1 through L 1 and j run from 1 through L 2. Okay. So, uh, this f 2 need not be same for all of these uh, j's. Okay. So, this uh, this f 2 is different for each of these b j's, okay. but nevertheless what we have is f of z uh, is of this form okay. uh, and uh, this gives that f prime by f f prime of z by f of z uh, uh, simple calculation shows that this is minus m j divided by z minus b j uh, plus f 2 prime of z divided by f 2 of z okay. and uh, this uh, this expression is analytic uh, in a neighborhood of b j. Okay. So, uh, it has its own Taylor series expansion what that means is this is the only singular part of the function f prime over f. Okay. So, that gives us uh, that um, the residue of um, f prime over f at the point uh, b j uh, is going to be um, minus m j. Okay. So, minus m j. So, that is um, it is. So, it is the negative of the uh, order of the pole at b j. Okay. So, by residue theorem then we know that uh, the integration over gamma of f prime over f um, d z is going to give us this 2 pi i times the sum of residues of f prime over f at a k. Okay. K runs from 1 through L 1 okay. and then plus 2 pi i times the residue sigma residue of f prime over f at b j. Okay. J runs from 1 through L 2. Okay. So, that gives us this is uh, 2 pi i times the sum of orders of zeros is capital M and the sum of orders of poles is capital M. Okay. So, that gives us M minus N which is what we want. Okay. So, that is the proof of the argument principle. Now, uh, an insight into why this is called uh, the argument principle. Okay. So, if um, f of z is uh, written as r e power i theta where um, r of course, is the modulus of f of z okay, and then uh, theta is the argument of f of z. Okay. So, f prime what is f prime of uh, z d z. Okay. So, that is thought of as d of f of z right? and this is d of r e power i theta now, because uh, f is r e power i theta. Okay. So, this is e power i theta times d r plus uh, i times uh, r uh, d theta. Okay. So, once differentiating r I get d r e power i theta and once differentiating e power i theta I get i times uh, uh, r e power i theta d theta. Okay. So, I can extract an e power i theta uh, and then I get uh, this form. Okay. So, uh, 1 by 2 pi i times the integration over uh, this gamma of f prime over f uh, d z uh, is really 1 by 2 pi i times integration over. Uh, so, f prime d z I am uh, using this form for f prime d z. So, f prime d z will give me e power i theta d r divided by uh, f of z which is r e power i theta. Okay, uh, over gamma okay, uh, plus 1 by 2 pi i times integration over gamma of uh, r e power i theta d theta divided by r e power i theta. Okay, so, I am just using this and uh, separating this integral into two pieces. Okay. So, uh, I, I guess I have a i here sorry this is i r. So, I get i r e power i theta d theta. Okay. So, then this gives me uh, after some cancellations this gives me 1 by 2 pi i times uh, 
uh, integration over uh, gamma of t r by r okay, uh, plus 1 by 2 pi i well uh, i cancels with i. So, I have 1 by 2 pi times integration over uh, gamma of d theta. Okay. Recall r is uh, the modulus of f of z okay. and, um, and then uh, theta is the argument of f of z. This gives us 1 by 2 pi i times integration over gamma of d r by r. Okay. Uh, this is nothing but the logarithm of uh, r as it changes. Uh, Okay, the logarithm of modulus of f of z okay, as z varies over uh, this gamma. Okay. So, you have here is the picture. Okay. So, you have uh, gamma some simple closed curve okay, somewhere here okay. and then uh, your modulus of f of z well firstly this gamma is taken by f to some uh, closed curve like that okay possibly with self intersections doesn't matter what uh, is important is uh, no zero of f lies on uh, gamma what that means is f of uh, z is not zero so zero is not in the image this curve which is the image of gamma under f okay uh, does not pass through zero okay so no zero of f lies on uh, gamma. So, this is your f of gamma. Okay. So, uh, the modulus of uh, f of z on gamma. Okay. So, when it starts, it starts at some point this gamma is oriented in some fashion. Okay. So, when you start here possibly you start here let us say okay. and as, as gamma is traversed this curve is traversed okay. and this whole curve is traversed and then when you reach back this point. Um, you reach back this point okay, and then modulus of f of z whatever this is, this is the modulus of f of z this length of this segment. Okay. So, you come back to that point okay, and uh, this is uh, log r between uh, that point and that point. Okay. So, uh, if I call this a, okay. so pardon my sloppiness, uh, this is between a and a. Okay. So, since the log of uh, uh, since the modulus of f of z returns to the same point uh, this uh, gives us uh, 0. Okay. So, um, so, this is uh, 0 1 by 2 pi i times this well, but that is the integration of d r by r over gamma is 0. Okay. But we cannot say the same about the other integral which is left out 1 by 2 pi times um, integration over gamma of uh, d theta. This picture uh, okay, might, might give an impression that uh, I assume that f of gamma uh, does not uh, surround 0, but that is unnecessary for the above proof. Okay. So, f of gamma could look like that as well does not matter. Okay. So, does not matter uh, what I said above holds true however f of gamma looks like okay so so in the case of 1 by 2 pi times integration over gamma of um, d theta okay so here if you start at a certain point like this okay so then uh, you'll keep track of uh, you you you'll sort of keep track of how the argument is changing okay as you run along uh, gamma in the domain. Okay. So, f of gamma will be tracing this curve. Okay. So, you will keep track of how the argument is changing. So, sort of when you rotate around 0 roughly speaking okay, once you will uh, pick up an argument uh, which is 2 pi. Okay. So, it depends on the index of uh, f of gamma around 0. Okay. So, this is actually uh, the index of um, Okay, so, we define the index anyway. So, uh, that is the uh, index of f of gamma around 0. So, this picks up this number uh, picks up the change in the argument as uh, gamma is traversed. Okay, the change in the argument of f of gamma 
uh, okay. So, so this integral in essence picks up that difference in the argument, that difference in the argument which is the in which is the index of f of gamma around 0 okay. and hence this is called the argument principle. Okay. So, this uh, uh, theorem has that name because of this phenomenon. Okay. So, um, that is the first application okay, of Cauchy's residue theorem. So, as the next application we will consider applying Cauchy's residue theorem to uh, evaluate some definite uh, integrals. Uh, uh, definite real uh, integrals. Okay. Uh, so, these are improper uh, definite integrals. So, this is uh, application of uh, Cauchy's residue theorem to uh, evaluation of definite integrals. Okay. So, um, let me start with the following example. So, suppose uh, I want to evaluate 0 to infinity uh, d x by 1 plus x power 2 n. Okay. So, uh, when studying uh, one variable calculus or of real variable. Okay. So, evaluating this difficult uh, this uh, integral uh, might be very difficult, okay. uh, but using complex analysis uh, we can actually uh, or by using the Cauchy's residue theorem in particular we can uh, actually evaluate this integral uh, much easily. Okay. So, here is the strategy what we will do is uh, uh, the key is to pick the right kind of uh, contour on uh, which to integrate the function 1 plus z power 2 n. Okay. So, inspired by this function 1 plus x power 2 n, we pick up the function 1 plus z power 2 n, 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n rather uh, has uh, simple poles at uh, 2 nth roots of minus 1. Okay. So, I should have mentioned that n belongs to n, n can be any uh, natural number. Okay. So, it has uh, I mean it has simple poles at 2 nth roots of minus 1 okay. and uh, n of them occur in the upper half plane and n of them occur in the uh, lower half plane. Okay. So, um, excluding the simple case uh, z is equal to or n is equal to 1, okay. uh, we will consider n greater than 1. Okay. So, uh, in, in that case uh, uh, n of them lie in the upper half plane and n of them lie in the lower half plane. What we will do is we will pick a segment, okay, uh, uh, a sector of a circle like that, okay, which contains uh, I mean in the, in the complex plane we will pick a sector like that, here is the real axis. Okay. And um, here is a sector of angle pi by uh, n. Okay. So, we know that this contains one root of uh, z power 2 n plus 1, okay. namely e power i pi uh, by 2 n. Okay. So, e power i pi by 2 n is, uh, is, is one root of z power 2 n plus 1, okay, uh, 1 0 of that function okay, and hence it is a pole of that okay, and it is a simple pole okay, and um, here is a sector containing that. Okay, so, this is the real axis and uh, this is 0 and uh, this is the point r, a, a, a variable r on the real axis. Okay. And so, this point will be uh, r e raised to i pi by n okay. and uh, we will pick a contour here with the contour we will pick is uh, this is the join of these three smooth paths. Okay. So, we start from 0 go to r and then traverse this circle okay, uh, and then uh, come back along this path. Okay, we will call that uh, gamma. Okay, so, this we will call gamma, this we will call uh, C r for uh, a portion of the circle of radius r around 0. 
okay, and we will call the whole curve as capital gamma, okay, whole path as capital gamma. Okay. So, by uh, Cauchy's residue theorem, what we know is that uh, the integration on this whole path gamma of 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n d z is going to give us 2 pi i times the residue of the function 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n at the point uh, e power i pi by 2 n. Because this function 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n uh, is analytic on and inside this gamma except uh, at the simple pole uh, e power i pi by 2 n. So, that gives us uh, uh, this thing. Okay. So, let us uh, look at how to manipulate the left hand side to get the required integral. Okay. So, we can split the left hand side into three integrals depending on the three paths. Okay. So, the first path is 0 to r. Okay. So, that is the side I did not call any name. Okay. So, it is a uh, real integral. Okay. So, it is from 0 to r of 1 by 1 plus x power 2 n d x. Okay. Since, it is a real number I can just uh, use x. Okay. And then uh, the second portion is uh, the circle of radius capital R. Okay. So, on the circle of on the uh, portion of the circle of uh, radius capital R, uh, I have 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n d z and then I have the third portion which is uh, d z by 1 plus z power 2 n on um, on the path gamma. Okay. So, this is equal to 2 pi i times well what is the residue of 1 plus 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n at e power i pi by n. Okay. So, let us calculate that here in parentheses well we know that that is a simple pole. Okay. So, the limit z goes to e power i pi by 2 n of um, the residue of this function at e power i pi by 2 n is going to be the limit of that times z minus uh, e power i pi by 2 n times uh, this function 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n. Since, we know that we have a simple pole uh, for this function at e power i pi by 2 n this is the residue okay. and this can be calculated to be well this is the limit as z goes to e power. So, let me just call that point a for simplicity this is 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n okay. and 1 plus z power 2 n is anyway 0 at e power i pi by 2 n divided by z minus a. Okay. So, this looks like uh, f of z minus f of a by z minus a uh, here f of z is 1 plus z power 2 n and we know that this has a 0 at e power i pi by 2 n. So, f of a is 0 okay, and then uh, divide by z minus a okay. and so we know that the limit as z goes to a of this is f prime of z f prime of z at a sorry f prime of a. Okay. So, uh, this is going to be uh, the derivative of 1 plus z power 2 n okay, evaluated at the point z equals uh, e power i pi by 2 n. Okay. So, that gives us uh, 1 by 2 n z power 2 n minus 1 evaluated at e power i pi by 2 n, okay, which gives us uh, minus e power uh, i pi by 2 n. Uh, divided by n. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> this is uh, divided by 2 n actually okay. and uh, so the right hand side. So, this is all in parentheses. So, the right hand side here is 2 pi i times this uh, uh, residue which is minus e power i pi by 2 n uh, divided by uh, 2 n. Okay. So, this gives us um, this is equal to when we multiply 2 pi i to it I get uh, minus i times uh, pi e power i pi by 2 n divided by n. So, the left hand side if we if we look at the left hand side uh, one of the integral is uh, on the 
circle of radius r okay, or on the portion of circle of radius r of 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n. Okay. So, uh, on C r d z, okay. so on C r the modulus of 1 plus z power 2 n notice is greater than by the triangle inequality this is greater than or equal to the modulus of z power 2 n okay, uh, minus 1 well actually in absolute value, but for large enough uh, for large mod z okay, uh, mod z is greater than uh, 1. Okay. So, um, this modulus will be greater than 1. So, the absolute value of this will be equal to this by the triangle inequality of one kind okay. and so uh, this is uh, and the modulus of z on C r is simply r. So, this is greater than or equal to r power I mean this is equal to r power 2 n minus 1. Okay. So, uh, this integral on C r 1 by 1 plus z power 2 n will estimate this, this on C r is less than or equal to uh, uh, 1 by r power 2 n minus 1 that is the denominator okay. and then I have d z. Okay. So, the integration of uh, okay. so, the modulus of uh, d z on C r. Okay. C r is a portion of a circle of angle pi by n. So, this gives me pi r by n times uh, r power 2 n minus 1. Okay. And the point here is that when I let r go to infinity. So, if I let r tend to infinity. So, I will make this piece uh, bigger and bigger this sector of the circle bigger and bigger. So, this r tends to infinity. Okay. Uh, we are interested in r tends to infinity. So, this tends to uh, 0 as r tends to infinity. Okay. So, on gamma r okay, or on gamma we have okay, on gamma uh, we have z has the form e power r e power i pi by n. Okay. So, we are trying to parameterize this piece now. Okay. So, uh, on this piece what we have is um, gamma of t. Okay. So, so this can be parameterized like little r e power i pi by n the angle is fixed the argument is fixed. Okay. Here r varies from uh, 0 to capital R okay. or in uh, or it uh, the the direction of this is such that r you know uh, little r starts from capital r and goes until zero okay so uh, we have uh, this is equal to um, on gamma we have z is that okay and then uh, so the integration on gamma of dz by 1 plus z power 2 n is integration from r to zero of e power i pi by n dr divided by 1 plus uh, r e power i pi by n uh, raised to 2 n. Okay. And the denominator uh, can be simplified to be well I uh, will extract a minus e power i pi by n and then change the limits of integration from 0 to r okay. and then I have d r divided by 1 plus r raised to 2 n. Okay. So, the denominator can be simplified okay. and I have that. Okay. And uh, now, if now by letting r tend to infinity, what we have is uh, I mean I can substitute x instead of r. Okay. So, I get um, I get this is equal to by letting r tend to infinity this is equal to minus e power i pi by n uh, integration from 0 to infinity of d x by 1 plus x power 2 n. Okay. So, which is uh, a coefficient times what we want. Okay. And uh, for the remaining piece 0 to r 1 plus x power 2 n d x limit as r goes to infinity of this is what we want. Okay. So, in summary the L h s is equal to uh, 1 minus e power i pi by n times uh, what we want 0 to infinity d x by 1 plus x power 2 n. Okay. So, by choosing an appropriate uh, integral uh, appropriate function, okay, we are able to convert the definite integral uh, 
uh, into uh, okay uh, we are able to express the uh, definite integral into um, some complex integral okay and then uh, we are able to use the res residue theorem to get its uh, value okay and then this is equal to minus i pi e power i pi by 2 n divided by n which is our calculation earlier okay so this is uh, the residue okay so this is our calculation here okay so uh, this is so this is the rhs okay so this implies the integration from 0 to infinity dx by 1 plus x power 2 n is equal to uh, well upon simplification i'll divide the right hand side by this factor uh, i'll end up with pi divided by 2 n times sin pi by 2 n okay so um, so, the Cauchy's residue theorem can be uh, used to evaluate uh, some real integrals. Okay. So, uh, the viewer is uh, advised to uh, practice more exercises of this kind uh, from the uh, references or textbooks. Okay. So, um, with this example, uh, I will uh, conclude uh, this course here.